hello. Today, rather fittingly, it's exceedingly rainy and gloomy, so sorry if all you can hear is rain. England! Today I'm talking about The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne, a text that I think most American high schools set, um, so this has been completely overanalyzed, but I thought I'd have a stab at it. I feel really sad for all set texts in English because they're just received with this hatred of everybody that's been, that's been forced to read them and never get the joy of being like just read for the fun of reading. Uh, so I thought I'd do this with this and I really enjoyed it! The writing while being Old English was actually exciting to get along with, it dealt with lots of interesting things um, and it was quite easy to read. It's not that long, it's only about 70,000 words or something like that. Just um, an afternoon's reading. The story follows Hester Prynne, uh, who lives in sort of early colonial Massachusetts, um, and she's had an affair with somebody, um, and had a child from that affair, and by the courts has been decreed to wear a scarlet letter A on her breast. It's a symbol of repentance for her adultery um, and that she has to bear the shame and weight of that for the rest of her life. Everybody in the town is trying to get her to uh, tell everybody who the father of her daughter is, um, but she holds steady to not doing that, and throughout the book we see um, her deal, over about seven years, her deal with, you know, having to bear the scarlet letter and the father, who we find out eventually how he deals with it, um, but also uh, Hester's husband, who she thought had been dead for two years, trying to get um, over to the continent. He shows up and realises that his wife's been unfaithful to him, and then he embeds himself into the society under a false name as a physician. He builds up the ranks and then discovers who the father of um, the child is, and proceeds to essentially torment him from his position of anonymity, and he becomes a desperate, horrible man by the end of the book. Obviously the main theme in this book is sin and repentance, um, and Hester Prynne is shown in the book as a bit of a martyr. She shoulders her burden extremely well, she doesn't lash out, she just you know, wears a scarlet letter as she should. I kind of think she's a bit of a placeholder character. She doesn't, she doesn't change. I don't think she changed throughout the, throughout the book. She stands by on sort of high moral principles, and she's a, a, a seemingly lovely lady. High moral principles of her own morality and ethics. She doesn't, obviously, you know, she's she she knows that she's thin. She wasn't supposed to sort of, you know, commit adultery, um, but she she doesn't hide from the fact that she did that. She doesn't seem burdened with guilt of what she's actually done, she's burdened with the guilt of how it's affected other people, and just the shame of having to wear the scarlet letter. There's a huge contrast in this book between actual sin and sort of the hiding of sin, because the whole premise is that this woman has sinned but she's very forthright about it, um, and therefore, you know, carries, carries on with her head held relatively high and so she becomes a valued member of the community again. Um, but then the the man, I don't want to spoil any of this, the man, uh, the well-respected man of the community who is the father of Pearl um, obviously hides it and not not through sort of selfishness, well through selfishness but not, not sort of for himself, he still does care about Hester and Pearl, um, it's just he, you can see him throughout the book slowly being eaten up by it physically um, and he He's struggling to repent, he's torturing himself, starving himself, and he, you know, his health slowly goes into decline. Um, and it's it's the burden of, of hiding it and really being seen to society as a high moral figure that's eating away at him rather than, like, he's, he, he's, he wants to shout to the rooftops that he is a bad man and then he'd feel fine about it. Um, it it's just that he doesn't and can't. Um, that's the thing that's eating, eating away at him. There's also the hypocrisy of the rest of the community kind of scapegoating Hester and being like, she has done a sin, she is the one person that has done this bad thing and therefore we will punish and outlaw and isolate her because of it, when actually they've probably sinned a lot. Probably not in the same respect, maybe in the same respect, we don't know, um, but they're sort of taking this high moral ground when in the book they're not really uh, put forth as, you know, the most empathetic or kind people, they're just kind of uh, mob mentality type 
um, you know, people that point and laugh. So I think with that Hawthorne's trying to make us look at ourselves as a sort of collected society and our ethics in terms of thinking on a more individual scale than just being like, that's bad, let's punish because we are all human and we all make mistakes, blah 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 blah. It's really rainy now! At the end of the book, uh, there is a plan for Hester and Pearl and this man um, to sort of escape all of these troubles and go live anonymously elsewhere and it's a huge weight off everybody's chest and they've been so sad for a long time that this just sounds like an amazing plan. But what happens instead is that he confesses um, to everything and realises that uh, that is more freeing than, you know, physically being free to a man of God, that's the thing that's been holding him back is that he can't, he can repent to his, his Lord as much as he wants to but in terms of being truly repentant he needs to be repentant to the people that he feels like he's lied to. So that was an exceedingly jumbled analysis of The Scarlet Letter. I'm sure you can just take three English classes and get a better feel of it than that. But yeah, as, a, as an American that wasn't forced to read this book, I actually found it quite enjoyable and thought-provoking.